Welcome to House Talk, with videos that'll provide maintenance tips unique to Trilogy at Vistancia Homes, with your host, Doug Bowman. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about sprinkler systems. This may be the first house you've ever had that has actually had a sprinkler system in it. So we're going to spend some time talking about the sprinkler piping, the sprinkler heads, other components that have been installed, and what your responsibilities are for testing the system. If you've seen my video on water supplies, you've seen this sketch before. This is where the water comes from your water main at full city water pressure up into the side of your house and distributes to both inside the house, your irrigation system, and a dedicated line going to your fire sprinkler system. While all the water coming into your house goes through a whole house shutoff valve, after that, there is no isolation for the sprinkler system, nor should there be. This blue highlighted area is where we'll start our discussion today. We're going to use this blank drawing and build a typical fire piping system one piece at a time. Similar to your irrigation system, the water that enters your sprinkler system goes through a backflow prevention check valve to keep your sprinkler system water from flowing back into the city's water system if city water pressure was lost. Just inside your garage, on the backside of your water main, is your fire riser panel. I'm sure you've seen its blank plastic cover before. It can be easily removed with a flathead screwdriver without impacting the system. Inside you'll find a brass manifold that has several key components. The first one is a water flow switch. A sprinkler system has no flow through it. It's only when a sprinkler head operates or you're performing a flush test that you'll ever have flow through this system. This switch senses that flow and operates a fire bell. The next component is a pressure relief valve, and the one at your house may look different than these, but it protects the piping from overpressurization. Under normal conditions, a pressure relief valve would never operate, but if it did, you would see water dripping out of an open drain just on the outside of your wall. And lastly, there is a pressure gauge that initially was used during a hydrostatic test when the equipment was put into service, but you can see what the water pressure is on your sprinkler system. Now let's get back to our sketch. Piping leaves out of the fire riser, up through the wall, and into your attic, where it routes to all the different rooms throughout the house. This orange piping is dedicated for fire systems. It's called CPVC. Because the water in this piping is never circulated, it can sit for years on end, causing stagnation, having gas come out of solution, and causing quite a bit of corrosion. This piping is dedicated for sprinkler systems and is great to prevent corrosion. Here's a view of what it might look like up in your attic. Lines tap off of the main line here to each room to make sure that they're adequately protected. Now let's talk about sprinkler heads. There seems to be a misconception that once one sprinkler head operates, they all operate, kind of like smoke detectors, but that really isn't true. Each sprinkler head is heat activated and operates independently of the others. Studies show that most fires can be put out with just one sprinkler head. Here at Trilogy at Vistancia, we primarily have two types of sprinkler heads. The one on the left is typical of what's found in a garage, a little bit more durable, has a higher operating temperature at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, and is a liquid type. The sprinkler head on the right is for indoors and has a slightly lower operating temperature of 162 degrees Fahrenheit. It operates when a solder connection melts. Both of these sprinkler heads deliver four gallons a minute, but can far exceed that depending on the pressure. The most important thing you need to know about sprinkler heads are these maintenance tips. Don't block sprinkler heads or obstruct their flow path. Don't hang anything from them, don't paint them or get paint splattered on them, and don't ever tamper with them or remove them. And if you're ever unfortunate enough to have to replace a sprinkler head, look in your fire riser. You might be delighted to find two spares that were left there when the house was built. Seriously. Now let's get back and finish our drawing. The last component that's installed is the flushing valve. It's probably mounted in the opposite end of your house outside. I bet you've looked at this valve before and wondered why it looks so different from all the rest of the faucets. You should never use this valve for anything but flushing and testing your sprinkler system, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few seconds. 
The last device is actually electrical. It's the fire bell mounted outside up high on your wall. This bell is 120 volts AC fed from your circuit breaker and it operates when there's enough flow through the system as detected by the flow switch. So far we've talked about how the system is designed and installed. So let's talk about now how it operates and talk about a flush test. We'll start with a caution for you, the homeowner. You need to know whether or not you have a security service and whether or not your sprinkler system is tied to that because when you perform this flush test, it's going to seem like there's an actual flow through the system which may send a notification to your security service who may in turn either contact you or call 911. You need to know that. That's pretty important. And if you're hesitant about performing this test yourself, you can always call the licensed fire protection service to perform it for you. So now that our drawing is complete, let's use it to walk us through a flush test. We start by slowly and fully opening the flush valve. Water will flow from the water main up to the water shutoff valve, up through the fire riser, past the flow switch, which is now sensing flow, through the attic, down through the back wall, and out the flushing valve to the ground. As water is flowing, the bell is sounding and will continue to sound until the flushing valve is slowly closed again. Don't be surprised by the strength of the flow or the smell or the frothing of the water since some of this water may have been in there for over 10 years. Now, let's watch a real demonstration. Be sure to open and close the flushing valve slowly to avoid water hammer, and you should observe a pretty powerful flow. Just in this 15 seconds, I got four gallons of water. That's pretty impressive. Now, I'd like to close out today's video by talking a little bit about some of the frequently asked questions that I've heard over the last several years regarding with permits and certification and insurance requirements. So I've made a few points of contact and here's what I have found so far, at least as it applies to my house. City of Peoria inspectors permit and inspect the initial construction of a house and any permitted revisions like a new fireplace or a backyard fire pit. But once those inspections are completed and closed, there is no annual or required residential inspections that they have to perform or that they require at all. Follow-up inspections are the responsibility of the homeowner. If you need an inspection or work to be performed, you need to use an approved contractor to perform the work. The City of Peoria maintains an ongoing list of approved fire prevention contractors on its website. If you need one, you can stop the video here and copy their link here in red. Another comment that I've heard before about insurance is that you have to maintain your sprinkler system certified in order to maintain your insurance. I talked to two different insurance agents and here's what I found. There is no requirement for a policy owner to maintain their system. It's considered to be maintenance. Whether maintenance is done or not, it doesn't affect the policy. Another insurance company said that they don't have an annual inspection requirement for a sprinkler system, and it's kind of similar to your house wiring and plumbing, where it has to be inspected and certified initially, but there is no ongoing inspections required after that. If you've got any questions about your specific insurance, I suggest you contact them. And while you're at it, ask them if you're getting a discount for owning a sprinkler system. So in conclusion, if we learned anything from today's video, it's these items. Never isolate your fire sprinkler system. Don't block, obstruct, hang, paint, or tamper with your sprinkler heads. Flush test your system annually. If you need repairs or modifications, use a certified contractor. And if your system operates, make sure you call 911. And while you're thinking about it, check the battery in your smoke detectors and CO2 detectors to make sure that they're working. If you like this video, you may like these other videos I've done specifically about Trilogy Homes. Thanks again, and if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.